Hi, it's Kathy Davis here from Momentum. What I'm going to do now is take you through how EXO needs to be set up for the JobKeeper payments. I'm presuming you've already registered your um, interest of JobKeeper online with the ATO and there's a number of steps that you'll also need to make sure that you've got in place in time for the JobKeeper payments being made to your business. Now, if you have a look, you must also make sure that you keep paying your staff their $15 a fortnight. You have to notify your employees that you're intending to do the claims. You also need to make sure that your employees complete the employee nomination form basically giving you approval to do the claims on, on your behalf and they need to return that to you by the end of April. Then you also have to register with the ATO your details, including your bank details and how many staff you actually have um, for your first couple of claims. So all that is of course available on the ATO website under JobKeeper. So, what we're going to do is we've got a couple of things to do to set up the um, JobKeeper notifications with the ATO through your single touch payroll. The first thing you need to do is actually create the new allowance categories for the allowances. Now these allowance categories actually need to be set up because they're separate from your standard ones that you would use for your um, motor vehicle, etc. So what I have done is I've set up three allowance categories. And as you can see, there's one here for um, starting, which is the notification to the ATO of your um, eligible staff. There's this top up one for the paying the difference between the um, their current wages and the $1,500 if they're getting paid less than the $1,500 a fortnight. The other one will depend on whether you require it or not and that last digit will vary depending on if you need it and when you actually require it to notify of any staff that are no longer in your employment. And it will be a matter of sending a finish allowance code to the ATO to tell them what was the um, completion uh, fortnight of paying them. So if we just take a look at the standard one, it's just a matter of adding this exact word here for the actual allowance categories. Once you've completed that, then you're going to be setting up new allowance codes. These allowance codes can be whatever number you want, as long as you actually have this exact text, it's going to be a fixed amount and you must have it in here for one cent because the only way it is going to get picked up by the ATO in the single touch payroll is that there is actually a value. And yes, that one cent you will be paying to your employees as part of a salary when you send it. The other thing that's important is that you've actually selected show separately for the single touch payroll category. And you pick up that category that we created for the start. The other thing that you'll need to do is untick the annual leave accruals, liabilities, and leave the payroll tax one ticked because we're uncertain as to what the requirements are in the future. And this will allow you to actually um, it won't have any impact for your reporting, but if it's required, then it's there ready to go. This is the advice from my ob at this stage. So I've set up my start. And the other thing also is that if you've got staff that are below the actual um, $1,500 a fortnight, then you will also need to set up this top up one. This top up one will be for the difference between their pay and the $1,500. This one will not be liable for super, only the amount that you would pay them normally will be liable for super. 
And as you can see, there's a separate single touch payroll category for it as well. This one, you won't be actually entering in amount here because it will be dependent on the employee and how much you need to actually physically top them up by. So what we now have to do is actually pay the staff the allowance. You have an option of either using your current pay run or adding it into a one-off pay. The preference is to actually put it through the current pay run as you will be paying a one cent allowance to them and that would have to also be put through the bank. So I've opened up a pay run here for April and coming into it, I've set up the first person with the allowance already for notifying of the start and they're moving on to the next employee. This person hasn't actually, isn't being paid this month, this week, but you will still notify the ATO of the actual start of the JobKeeper and also add in the allowance for the top up. So I'm just selecting the top up and this will be $750 because this company is paying their staff on a weekly basis. So here we are now. So you just keep on paying your staff in what are a normal standard pay run length that you would normally do. And move on through the other staff to add in the notification. All right. So from there, you process the single touch payroll as per normal and it will go through to the ATO and they will be notified. The last thing that you'll have to do will be on a monthly basis to actually confirm your employee payments with the ATO and this is all done on the ATO um, Access Manager screen and you'll be completing their job, keep, job keeper declaration report. So please get in contact with us if you've got a large number of employees where one off, one by one, it's not going to be satisfactory to update the pace because they can be uploaded via the time trans file. And so if you're actually importing your timesheets at the moment, you will be able to add in the additional allowance code, which will then update your um, employee pay records in the week that you actually want to send the notification to the ATO. The other thing is also, it is not a problem which pay run or in what order you send that notification to start. As long as it is being done in April, if it's fine if you've already done two or three pay runs and just sending it with the last one of the week, uh, last one of the month. If you need to get in contact with us, send us an email at support at momentumss.com.au or give us a call on our usual number 54791877. Thanks very much, 